<clears throat> I think I will do this one kind of in the middle. This you don't want this spring to you want to try to have it not in a super stressed position. You don't want to overstretch it. Oh, I remember messing with this kind before. Uh, well, when they're old, I think what I was talking about in the other previous videos, I was talking about, I even tried it and it just broke again like I thought it would do. Uh, when they break, you can uh, stretch them on around and rehook them up, but they're not going to last long at all. There we go. So here it is. Um, that's how it ended up. And then there's my connector. And those little tabs are right there. And that's been, I bent them towards the inside. And that's, uh, so now that they don't go back through. But they're not, I can't really do it with, do it with my finger very good. That one moves pretty easy. Anyway, they're not, uh, probably can't see that it's moving. They're not, <clears throat> they're not the kind that's, you know, stick steel, real steel. But this one ended up right on the, this one I was talking about, it ended up right on the end. This one I had some spring left, which is what I was kind of expecting. But I didn't stretch this one. I could have stretched it more, but I didn't want. To. I didn't think that's. I don't think that's a good idea with them. Now you want them to kind of be as evenly spaced as it can get. But the main thing is that they don't touch. They don't touch the base back backing plate, whatever they call it, uh, and ground out. That that will burn it up. Uh, you know the dryer. Like I was saying, the dryer has the safety fun fun functions in it. Switches and heat sensors. It will just shut the thing down. It won't uh, heat up your wiring and go through and sh you know burn up your ha burn your house down by heating your wiring up. Have you ever seen a wire? Uh, I haven't really seen it. I've seen the results in AC, but I've seen it happening on DC several times over the years. I'd be working on an old truck or something, and uh, uh, you get something in a dead short on a wire, and you can you hear go, he goes Bzzz, and you just watch that heat running through that wire and you see the you can see the smoke and you can see the uh, insulation just bubbling up and melting and uh, dc actually does that f worse quicker way easier than uh it could be because on a it does it way way quicker you can you can see i've seen wires heat up and 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 they'll rattle and they'll you can hear that a uh, vibrating sounds with ac and then it'll click click the breaker but they don't melt the insulation like they do on DC wiring, and it may be that the insulation is better on AC wiring for safety's sake. But, uh, well, and there's another thing. You know, you're running, uh, generally in American, you know, 110 volts, 15 amps. 220 is usually 20 or 30 amps. I mean, I'm sorry, 100, 110, 115 volts is... Uh, it, 110 volts is usually what we call it. Uh, it can be anywhere from 110. It's generally going to land on 110, 115, or 120. 220 is anywhere from 220, 230, 240 volts. They're really a range. And it depends on, well, it depends on how the device is designed. It depends on what your house can supply. And, and you see, a voltage, you know, all around the world, your AC voltage, it varies a lot. A, well, that much of a range uh and you know in, in america we use 60 hertz cycles and in, in over in most you know overseas they use 50 hertz in a lot of countries and that makes a, a different but most of these appliances are made to be able to run on either one some things like i remember the older some of the 90s and early 2000s computer well the 90s 80s and 90s computers uh they uh <clears throat> They all had a switch on them, and, you need, and if you needed to switch them to, uh, you know, 110 or 220, it'd usually say, sometimes it would say 115. But anyway, I lost my track of what I was going into. But, um, <clears throat> well, maybe it'll come back to me. So I'm going to set this aside until, uh, until I'm ready to uh, put it in. I've got to get get the dryer opened up. 
Oh, I didn't get my uh, putty knife out. <clears throat> wonder if that screwdriver will do it, that little one. <clears throat> it is a little chilly out here. I'm not cold, but this me all this metal stuff is cold in my hands to touch. I'm glad I moved that big trash can. Last time I didn't do that, I just kept crawling around it. <clears throat> this has been open so many times. It's got a pretty good gap in there. Yeah. There we go. You gotta, gotta kind of hit the. There we go. I think that's probably ended up being a little easier that way than with the putty knife. When I was doing it before, I kind of think this is not coming off as easy as I remembered, you know. Okay, so yeah, I guess this. There's some covers back there for stuff that I think they can just stay there where they're at. Yeah, now let me see. Yeah, I've got to have the front got the front door all the way off. I've got to uh, get the drum out again. <coughs> all that fun stuff. Okay. I uh, don't remember what size it was. There it is. Got it. First try. And, uh, well, we're making a video anyway. If my audio didn't, doesn't work, then I worry too much about all that stuff. Um, well, I did every, all, half of my videos I did before, something, well, my, my cable, that's the reason I'm not using my cable, that mic I was using. Uh, the, for sure, I, I tested it. I had thought that the, uh, the cable on the mic was getting going bad and it was cutting in and out making static and it was but the audio was completely quitting and when I tested it it didn't quit so I'm wondering I was also using a 10 foot extension cable and I'm wondering if it had a bad play you know bad cable on it too that was letting go completely so I could have had that's happened you, you you wouldn't believe how many times two cables when cables get old you'll just you'll just by dumb luck you know dumb bad luck You'll get two bad cables that, and go around and around and around trying to fix them. I used to run, I ran sound for bands for, well, I started learning sound in 1983, but I ran sound most weekends during, throughout all the 90s for bands. <clears throat> and uh, I learned to trace cable pr f problems fast. <laughs> the show must go on. So, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I think I moved my chair. I got. I'm using my chair for a tool to hold my tools. But I'm going to be having to, that right over there in that area. Is back over there is where all this stuff needs to go. Let's see. Oh, the drum. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. I see where my piece of plastic that fell in in there. I don't know if that's in the picture or not. Let's see. Oh, fuck. This is heavy. Okay. Let's see. I was trying to set it. Anyway, there's a piece of plastic there. There's one that's working. Only a very small remains of it. This one's almost worn through. There's some rubbery stuff there. That's I've got the replacement stuff for that. Uh, oh, and there's the felt. And that's on top of the felt. Felt looks good. But that uh, rubbery stuff is just about getting ready to wear through. Well, I've got the repair kit. So uh, we'll see. I may replace every bit of it. <clears throat> or replace what's bad for sure. Okay, Mr. Drum was already uh, out. Been out and been just set back in there. And uh, it's pretty tight fit. they got to get it just right. But uh, usually I use the belt to pick up on the back side, but I didn't put it back on. Oh, nearly knocked my box of screws over. Okay, now. Uh, can you see somewhat of what I'm doing? <clears throat> First, 
before I put that thing back in there, I just wanted to get it all wired up and make sure that that was going to work. Because if there's anything wrong, I wanted to go ahead and be able to order another one while I, and then go to work on this. And I'll go get my kit, my, my repair kit. <sighs> And, uh, okay, washer parts. I think those are just washer parts. And, uh, move them over here for now. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I don't want to spend more time moving the camera around this time. Okay, so, uh, let me set this lid down for a minute. That way I got something to set this on. In the camera range here. Now here's my kit, old belt. It still works, but uh, yeah, it's starting to have little splits here and there. These things really are the, if only, uh, Autom oh yeah, it's pretty bad shape. If only automotive belts lasted as long as these do. Uh, maybe they do. It's just that when your car belts break, it can often be in a really bad time, time and place. Okay, pack of paper. There shall you go. Why don't I put, it's kind of been in there, to, it kind of helps, you know, when I have stuff in boxes and then I stack stuff on boxes on boxes, and now here's some of the older stuff that I saved in case it was needed. Uh, when you stack stuff, if you have that, look, go ahead and leave that packing paper in there, then you, uh, you won't crush the box completely or the, par or the parts that are in there completely. Uh, repair clinic. That's where I got this one. Paid seventy six ninety four for it two or three years ago, I believe, and didn't put it in because I had fabricated a makeshift um, bearing bushing that worked, but uh, for what. Well, that amount of time, but it's completely uh, r rubbed all the way through now. So uh, the heat and quit just in time before this got, that got to be a real problem. But this has the uh, it has the uh, bearing the hitch for the back, the trailer hitch ball that goes screws on the back of the drum. It has the idler pulley for the uh, belt. Got some instructions, and it's got a belt, uh, the, the the drive belt. It's got the felt, the little plastic, and this is a Electrolux Frigidaire brand. Let's see, what is it I need out first? Oh, it should have the, uh, where's the brackets? Let me get this stuff out. Because it should have the brackets that I need. I'm going to go grab my scissors because I don't have any. I got a knife in my pocket that's too dull to cut that without just ripping it to shreds. Anything. You know, my toolbox rolls. I could have brought it up here, but then if I needed to really, I don't have, I only have just enough walking space there. So, I guess I'll just cut it all the way off. Uh, trash can is gone now. Now I don't have any place to put stuff. Okay. Paper instructions, very good. Now for that, I've never done the felt. Last time I, I bought a kit like this, but I didn't put the felt and stuff in. I think I wore myself out before I got that far. And uh, I just saved it for later. It might not have been as bad, all that super bad. But yeah, here's the part I was talking about. The This one in the middle was hardly, it was gone. I, I was, I found it in the bottom of the drawer and I threw it away, but I didn't really know where it went because I hadn't, I didn't put all this on. That's the one that's underneath this one. And that one's 
is on top it carries the weight the drive belt it's got some glue I know in here for that I'll just get it all out I guess I think I'm gonna end up using all of this stuff this time I'll put these back in there for now keep them they're so nice and clean keep them that way Yeah, so this is kind of an overhaul job here. One of these would be grease, and yeah, this is the the glue for that. <clears throat> and I uh, also got that JB Weld to try to fix this again. I did it with some kind of epoxy or something. Unless that's body putty. It looks the color of body putty. I may have I had some body putty in the garage here for years. I may have. Uh, and it wobbles like crazy, but it still works. But, uh, I'm trying to get some, make some light shine on that. It's just, you know, worn. I, I, I looked and looked for one of these, but they were just, I just see one every once in a while. It wasn't, I, never, I only saw one that would look just like this one. But they would be for this brand, but they'd be white and, they look like they were about the same diameter, but they'd be twenty-five to fifty dollars, you know, and I ain't paying twenty-five dollars for one. So uh, I paid five dollars for some epoxy putty instead. Now that is going to need to go on there. I'm not sure exactly when. I guess I'll just put it back in here. Got to put the stuff on at the right order, you know. Okay. So. I guess, you know, my stuff there can go back in the box. I should probably just, I put that paper back in there already. <laughs> but I really just need to be able to use the box for my parts to take good care of them. Making me want to just throw the paper away now. <laughs> well, I may, may not ever need it again. Get, get it out of my way. Little lost it in the floor, not the paper, the uh, the little what I cut off of that bag. <laughs> I was I had it and I was took it over there to throw it away, and then I dropped it. And I don't know where it went, it floated off on me. There's the old belt. I always save, uh, I've always done that with my cars and trucks, and doing it with the washers and dryers now. I save uh, old parts for emergency repairs. That'll save you a lot of trouble sometimes. <clears throat> okay, now this. See, it's got it's a whole other little. They just put it to get. They they call it a kit. They just put it in a box and call it a kit. You know, but uh, that's. That's fine and dandy, but that's another separate. You can order that, and it's actually not all that expensive by ordering this by itself. I think it's, depending on where you get it, 15 to 25 $35. And this is the trailer hitch ball I'm talking about. It's all chrome and pretty. Look at it. It's just a perfect baby trailer hitch ball. It's about inch, inch and a quarter diameter. And uh, this is the grease. High temperature, yeah. That I was using, uh, well, I believe when I put it together, I may have, there's, I had some of this left over, and I may have put some in there. I don't remember, but I, I do remember, well, I kind of think I had, I have some just regular, you know, wheel bearing grease. And then I started squirting, like you joint grease through the back, back a little hole in the back. And uh, every time it would start making noise, but I didn't uh, a lot of times I would be uh, with my health like it is that it would be doing it and I wouldn't feel like doing it okay so here's the this is the bearing or well this is be the bearing I guess if there was it's a bushing setup this is the bushing this is the original I don't know if you can be able to see it or not but uh, it's a cup and this thing goes in there 
and that keeps it the way since it's a cup it uh, this is the back of the drum so it can't go forward and come off and that's why i couldn't figure out how to get it apart because i couldn't see that in there because that the flange on that heater thing it comes right up to the edge of uh, so here's let me put it in the in position i'm thinking of back of the dryer this screws up to a, a, there's a l bracket on the that you, you screw this through the back of the dryer this has to be set down from the top and then you can't see in there no matter where you go well maybe if you knew where you were looking you might find a crack you know about an eighth inch wide but you can't see in there to see how it comes apart and so first time i tried to get it apart 10 15 years ago i finally gave up and i usually never have to give up <laughs> stuff I, I i didn't want to tear it up so uh so i did give up and uh i mean with a car or a truck i have resorted to getting us you know get I, I never had a torch so i didn't torch it off but i get a hacksaw usually it was a hacksaw but last time we did it uh couldn't get the couldn't get the front uh the front uh, on a 90 99 chevy silver auto pickup couldn't get the front brakes off couldn't get the uh calipers off so i got my saws all out and we cut them daggum long bolts off and then then we were able to get to them to get them out i was afraid they'd be really stuck but well you had the whole link we cut it in the right place so that you had a bunch of bolt to get a hold of with the with the <clears throat> five scripts and pipe 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 wrench whatever oh okay now here's our uh our brackets let's get those out it's funny because the bracket i made out of a piece of angle iron is a lot oh that's the little ball bearing or one of them let's see oh yeah there's there's a little ball bearing i don't want to lose it uh bigger than a bb but it goes in this thing you put some grease in there and it'll stay i'm gonna lose it there's a hole in here. Goes on the inside. Can you even see that hole? I think, I think so. Put it on my black shirt. Um, you, you, I did not know. <clears throat> I figured it out just from <laughs> witness marks that it went there the last time. Uh, I figured it out. What I mean is like on a used piece. Uh, before, but the la anyway, the last time I got a new one, I saw in the instructions. It is. It's to ground this you know in a dry well it still happens you know but in the dryer when you grab your clothes and you get that shock of static electricity uh it's to ground it i think it's to help from that but you know it's i think the main purpose is to ground it in case any 220 gets like if if that heating coil were to be touching the hub uh, touching the the, the, the t touching the tub or this if the heating coil was to touch this you'd be getting 110 or maybe 220 to this to the tub and so i believe that's what it is is to ground that well that would make the uh if nothing else the breakers blow in the house but it should set off the safety well that they're they work on heat though the uh, thermostats work on heat but i don't think there's a, i don't know there might be a reset in there somewhere uh, uh one that resets on current but anyway this is the uh i'll show you the bracket getting my mic in the... so this is the uh i showed you the little cup a while ago that's that is what the bearing amounts to it's really a bushing i wouldn't call it a bearing nowadays they do, they don't call things uh what is it I'm doing wrong here? They're supposed to match up like that. Is that it? I think that's it. I don't know why it's made that exactly like it is. But yeah, that's how that's how it fits. I can tell by the screw holes. That goes, and then you, you drive the screw, the long, uh, they're like sheet metal screws. You drive them through to the back into, into this. And so this is what holds this up. Yeah, I'll go ahead and use this. It would be really hard to get those holes all right. I mean, I could just leave that bracket 